Okay, here. I apologize for the crude setup of this. Uh, what's going on, everybody? This is GMC from 96.9 The Whip, as you may know. Uh, I'm going to try something a little different here. Dog has kind of contributed so much to the uh, YouTube channel, so I figured why not do something special, too. He does all this technology stuff. Um all of his concert videos. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try something a little different. Um as many people know, I um or was kind of a wrestling fan. Kind of. I watch wrestling. And already they're thinking, oh my god, you watch that. I liked it. And I say I liked it because it has gotten really bad lately. I mean, really, really terrible. But, um, what I'm going to do is just like a series of my own personal experiences with uh, wrestling. Because I think the general consensus is that wrestling at its core is completely stupid. I mean, really fucking bad in terms of just storylines and um, j just the whole, the thought of wrestling, if this was like a real life thing, that if, like, wrestling exists in a world on its own. You know, rule. There are rules. Of, certain rules apply for real life, and then there's certain rules for wrestling. And I'll get into that. But really, the first thing I want to talk about was a particular storyline that <laughs> is just unreal. It just proves how crazy the world of wrestling is. And um, really. You have to start from the beginning. The The storyline I'm going to talk about is um, the McMahon-Helmsley era. Uh, Stephanie McMahon and Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And to really, yeah, like I said, when you really, to find out what you need to do, you need to go back to the beginning. So, uh, long story short, you had Stephanie McMahon, who was not... Um, a normal character on the show, a regular character. She had shown up a couple of months prior to all this. And she was dating, quote unquote, uh, a wrestler named Test, uh, Andrew Martin. And they had uh, this kind of romance that just kind of blossomed out of nowhere. One one day, they're just dating, <laughs> which is weird. But, anyway, uh, they go through a series of matches, which I'll, I'll get into some other time, because the bottom line, okay, bottom line, um, Stephanie McMahon and Tess decide they're going to get married. <laughs> they, they have known each other... For approximately 23 minutes, give or take. This is a very whirlwind romance. And um, Tess is like, you know, Steph, will you marry me? And she's like, yes, of course I'll marry you because you're just so big and strong. And then, uh, God, I forget. I think it's the British Bulldog who... He has a problem with Vince McMahon. Vince being the god of the promoting world of wrestling. And so, Vince, he, he's having an argument with Vince. So, the Bulldog's about here. Vince is here. Stephanie McMahon is kind of over in the corner uh, on the phone or just out of the way. or She's doing something. I think she's just standing there. <laughs> and... The Bulldog says, like, uh, I have a problem with you, Vince. And Vince is like, I don't care. Get out. Uh, I honestly don't know the reason why. What the hell is that? Yeah. 
And so the bulldog, he grabs, I think it's either a chair or a trash can, and he just hurls it towards uh, Stephanie McMahon's direction. And you hear this, just this bang! And suddenly Vince is like, Oh my God, Stephanie! Oh my God! <laughs> the camera cuts, and Stephanie McMahon is just... Oh my God, she's dead. Dead to the world. Now, my first question would be, like, what was Stephanie doing there? Was she... Uh, was she... Like, I would assume she'd be staring at this situation going on. This big 230-pound gorilla coming into this locker room yelling at her father. I would assume that she'd be looking at her like, well, what are you doing? They never established that, you know, she was busy or she was on the phone talking to somebody, you know, planning for her wedding. No, she's just standing there completely dumbfounded that this... Englishman is yelling at her father, and that he throws a trash can, knocks her out, <laughs> supposedly knocks her out, and of course, in the real world, when one gets hit in the head, they suffer a concussion, uh, you know, they get a bump or a bruise. Now, in this world, in the TV world, Stephanie McMahon gets amnesia. Oh yeah. They they went the amnesia route. And so she doesn't remember a thing about Tess. She she's like, Andrew she calls him Andrew. Andrew, I don't remember our love. <laughs> I I don't remember you. Uh, you ha I'm doing it far more justice, but uh, Stephanie McMahon cannot act to save her life. It, literally, when she first came on screen, I think she, she's gotten better, but when she first came on screen, it was literally like she was reading her lines off of a cue card. Like, at any time when she was reading her lines... I was fully expecting her to be, Andrew, I've forgotten our love. I don't remember. Turn, turn card over. Oh, wait. I wasn't supposed to read that, was I? Uh, just... Oh, my God. But somehow, instead of just knocking her in the head again, which they probably should have, suddenly Stephanie McMahon just remembers. One day she just ups and remembers everything. And so she comes out to the ring. She calls Test out. She's like, Test, I remember. I remember it all. Will you marry me? And of course, Test is like, of course I will, Steph. I love you. Yeah, th this romance... <laughs> Though I have to admit, Test and Stephanie McMahon, way more romantic than Edward Cullen and Bella Swan. I think Toast and Butter would be a better pairing than Bella and Edward. Anyway, they, they decide to have the wedding. And of course, instead of doing it in a church or doing it in, like, a regular setting. No, they're going to have it live on Raw. <clears throat> okay. Here's the problem. When you look back at the history of all weddings ever done on TV, and I'm talking wrestling, I'm talking soap operas, I'm talking everything. When has a wedding ever gone right? And the answer would be nothing. Zero. Never. <laughs> 
Never has a wedding been broadcast on television gone right. And I'm not including the royal wedding. I don't give a shit about that. Okay, but here's the problem. Before his wedding, uh, Vince McMahon decides to give Test uh, a surprise. He says, Test, you're going to be the uh, my future son-in-law, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a match. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about those wedding jitters. We're going to give you a match tonight. And you're going to wrestle and then you're going to you're going to marry my my daughter. And oh, oh wow. Uh So Tess has a match. I I totally forget who it's with. I don't want to say it's Triple H. It could have been I don't. Rem I don't. I honestly don't remember. But Test wrestles a match before his wedding. Uh, that would be the equivalent of somebody going uh, dirt biking <laughs> before their wedding, or uh, like going going on a dirt bike race and then going straight to the wedding. Like, not even having time to shower or get cleaned up. Like, they're in their gear, they're riding their, their dirt bike, and then suddenly they just get up and go to their wedding. <laughs> like, that's pretty much what it is. And so, uh, throughout the episode of Raw, they show Stephanie McMahon, and she... She had her bridal shower the night before, I believe. And they just show this clip of, like, yesterday she had her bridal shower. She went to this really uh, posh hotel room. She had her friends there. And she walks up to the bar, gets a drink. The bartender's like, you know, I'm, I'm here to serve you, Miss um, McMahon. Congratulations on your thing. Remember that. And so, they set up the ring. And if you've never seen a wedding on Raw, um, they take the, the ropes off of one side of the ring, and that's going to be the, where they come in at. And they have everything set up. They have a white sheet down over the ring. They have the, the, the pedestal where the, the preacher stands. They have a little... The archway, they have everything set up. It's just, it's beautiful. And so, the be the the ushers, the groomsmen, ironically enough, are uh, the Hardy Boys, Matt and Jeff, and I think Edge and Christian. Which is we're, really weird. And they're down there, they, they're leading Stephanie McMahon's bridesmaid down. And... Suddenly, Test's music comes on. And right away, you're thinking, okay, this, this is awesome. <laughs> because Test comes down to his theme music. To his wedding. He just had a wrestling match. And now, he is coming down to the ring with his theme music. Right, you know what? I'm going to say it right now. I want theme music if I ever get married. If I ever decide to get married, I want theme music. <laughs> I don't know what I want yet, but I want theme music. Because he comes, he comes sauntering down he's, with his ring music. I even think he gets up on the ropes and like does something like that. I don't know. And so, uh, Vince leads Stephanie down to the ring. And um, they they do the whole the whole marriage wedding thing, and I mean this goes on for twenty minutes, damn near twenty minutes. They even have people come out and sing a song. I'm I'm not sure what it is, but it's a really generic, just 
lovey dovey song. And, meh. I think it's a, I think they actually used the same song that the Macho Man and Elizabeth used when they got married at SummerSlam. I'm fairly sure they used the exact same thing. Uh, wow. <laughs> but this gets better. So, they get to the point where uh, Tess and Stephanie, they exchange vows. And the preacher gets to the big part. He says, if there's anybody who objects to this, this union, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. And, of course, all 20,000 people in the arena are just screaming, like, No! Don't do it, Tess! Think of the children! No! What are you doing? Come on, you have your whole life away from you! When can we see wrestling? <laughs> I thought this was a wrestling show. <laughs> I'm turning to WCW right now. It's the same thing over and over again, but it's got wrestling. And so... They get to, they, they go through that, and of course, nobody apparently is listening to the crowd. Who okay. cares? And suddenly, the, the preacher's like, so in, by the power vested in me, and by the state of blah, 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 suddenly Triple H's music starts. And it's not his uh, current music, it's uh, his old one that goes like, it's my time, it's my time. And now, beforehand, I forgot to mention this. Beforehand, Vince McMahon had given all of his wrestlers uh, a warning that if you are not invited to this wedding and you show up, you will be fired on the spot. So, a Triple H comes out on to the ramp and... Immediately, the announcers are thinking, like, what is he, what is he doing? D didn't he hear Vince McMahon? Like, he's going to be fired. Like, I, I don't understand this at all. And Triple H just has that shitting grin that he always has. And he's like, Vince, I know what you said. I know that you said if anybody that's not invited shows up, they're going to be fired. But I really think you should see this. And they cut to this video footage. Uh, like on this uh, handheld camera. Triple H is driving around Las Vegas in this convertible. And in the passenger seat, is Stephanie McMahon knocked out. <laughs> like, dead. She's like, you know, dead. <laughs> and Triple H, he's driving around, and they get up to one of those drive through wedding chapels. <laughs> so Triple H he drives up and the lady in the window she, he's like she, she says oh he hello how can I help you and Triple H says well ma'am uh, I'd like to me and my lovely woman here would like to get married and she's like oh okay well we can do that uh at, the, at this time, she's still dead. <laughs> Stephanie is still dead. And she says, like, we are gathered here in Vegas to, to join this man and woman. And even Triple H is like, okay, can we just hurry this shit along? Like, I have things to do. Like, we are anxious to get our honeymoon started. And she, she says, like, all right, well, repeat after me. Like, do you take this woman to be your love? And... Triple H says, I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> I'm here right now. Why not? And she says, uh, Stephanie, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded 
husband. And in <laughs> the the worst uh, pantomime ever, Triple H just kind of turns his head and he's like, uh, yes, I do. <laughs> and the woman not even stopping. <laughs> Not even one time saying, okay, there might be something wrong here. She just goes with it. She's like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'm getting paid one way or another. And so, she's like, okay, repeat after me. I, Stephanie, take you, Hunter. And he, he's like, I, Stephanie, take you, Hunter. <laughs> he just keeps pantomiming this stuff. And finally, she's like, I, and the, by the power vested in me by the state of Las Vegas, Nevada, I pronounce you man and wife. And he's like, you may kiss your bride. And he like, kisses her hand. And he's like, all right, man, help me get the stuff out of the, uh, the trunk. And Triple, he grabs the camera. And here they show who the cameraman is. <clears throat> Pardon me. And here it's the, uh, the bartender. Um, the guy that was serving Vi uh, Stephanie her drinks all night. So, we are to assume that said bartender slipped Stephanie McMahon a Mickey. And I don't mean the mouse. So, if, um, I'm going to use this term a lot in these videos, but we're going to Let's go into kayfabe land. And if you don't know what kayfabe is, uh, it's kind of like an insider's term for, uh, like, tr pr pretty much thinking that it's all real. That uh, if you go into wrestling, if you're watching wrestling on TV, uh, you pretend it's real. You pretend that these guys are actually trying to kill each other. Uh, you suspend disbelief for 20 minutes. 20, 30 minutes. Depending on how long the match is. But, and when they say, like, you broke kayfabe, that means you broke storyline. You broke the script that we are now real. So, going into kayfabe land, here's the deal. We are to assume that this bartender was hired by Triple H to not only drug Stephanie McMahon, but somehow get her away from her friends, get her into a convertible, meet Triple H somewhere, then they drive to a wedding chapel and get married. Two things. One, how did the bartender get Stephanie McMahon away from her friends? Because I've been to bachelor parties, and if there are anything like bridal showers, they go on pretty much all night. So, the bartender would have had to drug the other girls in order to get Stephanie McMahon out of the room. Because I, I assume that her friends would not be stupid enough to allow Stephanie to just leave with this total stranger. That they would say, oh my god, Steph, she's passed out. And the bartender's like, that's cool, I, I'll get her. I'll take care of her. And her friends would say, oh, okay. Let's get back to drinking, girls. Woo! I assume that they're better friends than that. Two. How did he get Stephanie McMahon from the hotel room, assuming that he got away from her friends? How did he get her from the hotel room to the convertible without attracting attention. 
Again, we must assume that this place is the most trusting place in the entire world. That they would not think anything of a man carrying a woman near death, passed out, drunk, and not question. I'm just going to go with that. And we will move on. So, they, they tie, like, the, the traditional cans on a string to the car. And Triple H, he, he's, he's leaning back, he's got Steph around his arm, and he's like, Here, get a shot of the new Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Oh, yeah. And they drive away. And the footage cuts back to the live crowd, the live taping. And, of course, Stephanie has tears just running down her face. And Test is like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just watched Triple H drug my future wife and marry her in Vegas. I am so... This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. He literally had that face. He's like, oh, my God. I can't believe what I just saw. <laughs> Triple H just just married my wife. <laughs> and they cut away to Triple H, and now he has his ring on his his ring finger. He has the uh, the mar the wedding ring. And she's like, he's like, oh, by the way, Dad, <laughs> like, uh, I know it's probably on your mind, but, like, I'm sure you're probably wondering, not did we, but how many times did we consummate the marriage? <laughs> and that's when Tess, like, runs towards him, and, and Stephanie, she's all crying to her dad, she's like, oh, my God. Why? Why did you put me in this fucking stupid storyline? <laughs> and this is the thing. And I'm going to bring this up in a future episode. Again, the rules of wrestling... The rules in the wrestling world are completely different from real life. Because if, if this shit actually went down, you could probably get it annulled. Because you could have the tape right there. You say, well, well I was not of sound mind and body when I married this. It's clearly obvious I was drunk. I was passed out. I did not say I do. And the judge could look at the tape, look at Triple H, look at Stephanie, look at the tape, and say, you know what? You're right. Case dismissed. <laughs> Marriage nulled. But no. Uh, in the wrestling world, when you have a grievance with someone, you don't pursue legal action you have a wrestling match so but this is the funniest part uh i think test who was supposed to marry uh triple h or not Tri i'm sorry steph i yeah test was supposed to marry stephanie and they just abandoned it they completely abandoned the whole thing. Uh, like, Steph says, I'm really sorry. Uh, I, I, I know you won't forgive me. And Tess is like, well, yeah, I, I guess we're done. No! What? Is, <laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> I... I don't love you anymore because you married someone under false pretenses. That makes no sense. 
But it's funny because I think at the next pay per view, I think it was New Year's Resolu Revolution, uh, Triple H has a match with Vince McMahon. It's actually like a street fight. And if Vince wins, the marriage to Stephanie is annulled. And of course, that's when uh, Stephanie turns on Vince McMahon. Actually, she does, like, not right away. Like, she has something. I think it's, like, a lead pipe or something. And Triple H grabs the pipe from her, and he she, he hits Vince McMahon with it and pins him. And he looks over at Steph, and Steph's like, Oh, oh, no. The big, the big gorilla's coming towards me. And all of a sudden, she's like, Oh, 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 yeah. Ah! <laughs> like, they pulled off the master plan, and... And so begins the McMahon-Helmsley era. But my question is, why wasn't Test in this match? I I think it would have made more sense to have the man who whose wife you had stolen be in the match. Unless they didn't think Test was worthy enough to be in a main event. So, yeah, then, after, like I said, after that, the McMahon-Helmsley era began, because now they were officially married. And, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I think there, if there's a lesson to be learned in all this, this particular storyline is, don't get married when you're on a wrestling show. Because it won't end well. You'll either find out that the woman you are supposed to marry was married in a 24-hour wedding chapel, drive through wedding chapel. Um, what else? Uh, like she'll leave you at the altar, or somebody will attack you and beat you up during your wedding. It. I've never seen a wedding on wrestling end well. It doesn't. Maybe Uncle Elmer. I think Uncle Elmer might have done it a little better. I I don't know. But uh, this, like, the more I thought about it, the more crazier it was, man. It, it, it's just proof that really they say anything can happen in the world, in world wrestling entertainment. Well, I think anything can happen in wrestling because... That's not even the funniest one. <laughs> We're, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go marry somebody. I'm gonna get him drugged, take him to a wedding chapel, like a drive-through wedding chapel, and just talk for him and see if it works. You know, they didn't even need marriage light. They didn't even need a license to do this shit. <laughs> so. Uh. Oh, pardon me. I feel like I've been doing brew reviews. So, uh, that's my first episode of uh, what I'm going to, I guess, called I call it WTF for what the fuck. Because a lot of these situations make you say that. <laughs> it, makes you, it makes you really say that because it's amazing. Wrestling is an amazing thing. It's stupid, completely nonsensical, but my God, it gives you a laugh. And I, I guess that's the reason why you watch it. It's not as good as it used to be by any stretch, but, you know, I've got enough uh, memories in my head to really do some good ones. So, uh, I don't know exactly what the timetable on these are going to be. Um, I guess I'll just... You know, release them as I do them. Uh, there's really no set time that I'm going to plan it. Uh, and it's all off the cuff, too, because I don't have a script. Who does it on this channel? But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope uh, if you want to see more, let me know. If you don't want to see more, let me know. But, uh, you know, if you have any ideas, if anybody watches this, watches wrestling, have any ideas for me to discuss, 
let me know. Uh, I'll gladly share my two cents with them or even share your two cents. So, uh, like I said, I don't know which one I'm going to do next. I I'm going to try and do little bits at a time. I'm not going to do, like, all WWF because WCW, ECW, and TNA, they all, all wrestling did the same thing. They all did stupid shit. And I'll try and do as many as I can, or many as I can remember. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. And uh, I'm sure if Dog was here, he would say the same thing, that I hope we just keep doing what we do and making you guys laugh and letting you have a good time, because that's what it's all about. And uh, stay tuned for brew reviews and whatever Dog has going. It should be fun. So... Thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you later.